Today on Cruise In, some people can see the beauty beneath. Found chairs sitting on it, covered in dust, bunch of mouse poop on it. And turn it into something amazing. This is an election year. Nixon for president and Kennedy for president. Both candidates that fit right in with this 1960s classic. Now here's something you don't hear every day. From our 78 year old grandmother. And this was her truck, she drove it around. I would have loved to have seen that. Plus, all the extras that had to go into this car to make this motor fit, it just, you keep on adding stuff, adding stuff. The Buckeye guys describe an engine swap in a Corvette. You ready for this week's episode of Cruise In? It doesn't burn your tush. No, no, I don't believe it does. Cruise In from Molly McGee's in Strongsville, Ohio, starts right now. Seven years strong. Hi, I'm Will Burge, and this week on Cruise In, we're in Strongsville, Ohio, at Molly McGee's for their seventh annual car show. The chicken popper cow soup is amazing, and the cars are even better, so let's get started. Mike, this is about as unique as we see out at car shows. What do you got behind you here? Well, this is a 1960 Parkwood, and it has a, a 2000 LS1 out of a 2000 Trans Am. So that's not what normally goes in there. No, this car originally in 1960 was born with a six cylinder with a three on the tree. And then the LS1 of course has a 4L60 four speed automatic, all modern. But this looks like a, a, a tow car. So it would have needed an engine like that, right? If they're gonna start towing. Back in the day it would have. Of course, this car, it's a recreation of a local drag racers tow car. Uh, I had it lettered. It says uh, West Park Chevrolet on it, which was a dealership back in the day, which Ganley owns now and then Midwest Auto Parts, which is a local speed shop chain back in the day as well. Is this a vision you've always had, or how did this come about? I saw it at a shop, had to have it, bought it, and then started the, uh, the updates. The Immediately, was that the vision for it, as soon as you saw it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, it happened pretty quick. You know, I've had it about four years now, so it's hard to recall all the details, but it was pretty quick once I got it. I just kept moving. <laughs> the lettering is awesome. It's, it looks right out of the era, and you have the Kennedy bumper sticker on the back, too. I do. On eBay, I found the uh, Kennedy sticker. I actually bought two. I bought Nixon for president and Kennedy for president, and then, of course, we all know that Kennedy was the most favorite, so I stuck with that. And tell me about the bike on the back as well. I converted a 47 Monarch bike into a modern uh, everyday whizzer. And that would have been something that had been used at this time as well. Well, because it's a recreation of a drag racer's local tow car, I felt that the bike on the back was almost like a, um, a track bike. So once you got to the track, you would take it off and cruise around the pits. It's super cool, and, and I love that you left the paint. Uh, it, it, you're not going to completely restore this thing, no, right? No, Don't do that to me now. You know, as a matter of fact, we had to clear the car. I didn't do it. A buddy of mine, uh, Dave, did. Um, the reason being is not that I washed the car a lot, but when you do, it looked like 2% uh, milk on the ground. The white just keeps coming off. So he cleared the car and to keep it looking good for a long time. Yeah, and the interior is great too. I mean, for, it's in really good condition. Thanks. Actually. Yeah, it's all been redone. New door panels, new seat cover, new headliner carpeting. Of course, the interior looks like brand new, and of course, the outside of the car looks patinaed. What made you go this route with this car? Just something completely different? Yeah, well, you know, I've always had shiny cars. Um, and you know that the problem with shiny cars, you're just, you're too worried about them. You're worried about someone putting fingerprints on them, somebody scratching it, things like that. And so I, I sort of gravitated to the, uh, to the rat rods and I've had quite a few, uh, sold most of them and uh, still have a couple and you really enjoy them. I gotta imagine when you take this out, people love it. Yeah, it gets a lot of attention. Who would have thought a station wagon that would get this kind of attention? You would never imagine it 20 years ago. I, I gotta imagine when you go flying by some people, they're like, what the heck was that? Just... <laughs> well, you know, the greatest thing is kids of all ages, especially young kids, you drive by them and they're in the back seat and they're looking and they're pointing. Who would know? They, you know, they have no clue what they're looking at, but they just, they enjoy it. Well, it's awesome. Thank you so much for bringing it out and showing it to us today. Oh, and, oh yeah, I've almost forgot. The, uh, what is that, what is that, a turbo booster on your yeah, window? Yeah, well, that's a that swamp thing? cooler. That's a, uh, that's air conditioning for back in the day. If, I want to say that air conditioning came into effect probably in the 50s, and not everybody, not every car had them, and so that was just a poor man's air conditioner. And how does it work? Well, you put water in it, and there's an abrasive in it, uh, I'm sorry, an, absorb, uh, an absorption uh, type device, and, and you get that wet, and as you drive, it, it pulls cold air into the car. Does it work? Not in this climate it doesn't, but I heard down in the southern climates it works very well. We're just too humid here for it to work well. And you look like, it, I mean, it looks like a turbo booster too, yeah. so it makes you look cool at the same <laughs> yeah. time. Or a bee catcher. Yeah, there, <laughs> one of the two. My wife's truck, it's a 1957 Chevy Stepside pickup truck. 
And this is very special, right? Yes, it is. My wife donated a kidney 19 years ago to her brother, and I bought her a 1962 Impala. We always loved the Fat Fenders. We were at Make-A-Wish six years ago, and we found this Fat Fender 57 pickup truck. So wait, you had the Impala, how'd you end up with the pickup truck? She made a trade. She traded them for money and the car, and we put it back together. It had just been painted. Oh, that's really cool. She, she gives a kidney, and then she ends up at the Make-A-Wish, she ends up getting a trade for something you guys wanted. That's true. Very special gift. Let's start with the interior. What, you, you went with the cloth. A lot of people go with leather. Well, why'd you go the other way? We, in the summertime and going out to the shows, it's become a routine for me and my wife to go to shows together. And you get in on that uh, seat after it's been out in the sun for a long time and it's extremely hot. So with the cloth, it's a little cooler. A little it more doesn't burn your tush. Yeah, exactly. And there's some custom stuff inside there as well, correct? Yes, there is. Uh, I uh, did the uh, bow ties on the kick panels on the door. And then uh, I'm, I'm a retired policeman and we did a badge and a flower for my wife on the the glove box. And there's a flower in the back too, correct? Yes, there is. Yeah, that's great. And then I, I see the wood bed is absolutely gorgeous. It's an oak bed and uh, we had the oak uh, chest made for the truck. And instead of mounting the spare tire to the side of the truck, we mounted it to the oak uh, chest. The, the tire uh, though is what? Spare well. tire I mean, that, that cover. looks like your truck. Spare tire cover I designed just accents the car and our patriotism. Yeah, it's very cool. So this is, if you were back in your police officer days, would the, you wish this is the kind of police car you could have had out there, right? Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> this started out actually as a work truck, and look at it now. you have been chasing down bad guys in style back then. Sure, we'd love to, to age like this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're looking almost as good as the truck. We try, we try. So your, uh, the, all, everything you guys did on the truck was a kind of cooperative effort, effort between you and your wife? Yes, it was. That's very cool. What was, what was the one thing she had to have on this truck? Uh, the ghost flames. Yeah? She loved the ghost flames. And I saw the detail in the, in the airbrush of the truck on the spare tire, the ghost flames on there too. That's, that's absolutely gorgeous. And you guys get this out a lot, huh? Oh yeah. Before we got married, when we were engaged, we used to go around to car shows together. That's really awesome. Well, first of all, thanks to her for, I mean, donating a kidney is an amazing heroic thing. Yes, it is. A wonderful, loving gift for her brother. I, and then and then you guys end up with this. It's a, it's a pretty nice return on the payment there. It's yes, it bad, is. Right? For her, it was. There's more from the Molly McGee's 7th Annual Car Show coming up. AC, tell them don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'd listen to them. Welcome back to the 7th Annual Classic Car Show at Molly McGee's in Strongsville, Ohio. All right, Bob, this is a big truck for a big guy. What the hell are you standing next to here? 1951 GMC model 251 ton. This is a, a, a load, to say the least, is it not? It's a fun car to drive. Yeah, this is very cool. Where'd you find it at? Uh, the border of Ohio from a 78-year-old grandmother. And this was her truck. She drove it around. and. Uh, she was impressed with it. Is that why you went out and found this truck in particular? Originally, yes. I really didn't want to cut it up because it's probably one of the last original trucks. What makes it so rare is the five window. Five windows were not, it was an option that farmers and commercial trucks didn't pay for. Oh, okay. But that's how I found it. I was looking for a five window truck. Oh, all right. And I see you got the uh, the wife in the back, the party going here. Is this everywhere you go? This is how it is? Yeah, we found out that everybody was fighting over shade, so we just bring our own. And you're, you got an elevated view. You can see everything that's going on. Oh, it's on. a skybox. You can see everything in the car show, no matter where you sit. So everything is pretty much original on this truck right now? Except for the driver's seat, which she changed the seat because she couldn't get close enough to the pedals. Oh, wow. And so I have found the original seat we're going to put back in it. How often do you come across trucks like this that are all original? Not often. Yeah. Yeah, you don't find, especially commercial trucks. Now, a 70 year old grandma drove this around. How much trouble do you have driving this around? Be honest uh, it's now. a workout. After 10 minutes, my phone says workout complete. So you don't even have to have a gym membership. You just drive this bad boy. Oh, huh? yeah. That'll, you know, you're more than willing to give it a try. No, no, no. I'm, gonna, I'm okay on that. I appreciate the <laughs> offer, though. 
And it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's so cool. I mean, you could drive this right onto a farm and you'd think you drove out of a time machine. It actually came off a farm in Nebraska. Was it always this color? Uh, as far, the original color is more like a lime green that I found a few flakes of. And uh, but did you paint this or did she already have it painted? She already had it done. So she was riding around in this thing, muscle and turns in style? Yeah. I got to meet I was the, impressed Why with are her. we interviewing you? I got to meet this lady. <laughs> this is the person I got to be uh, She's still married and has a husband, so, you know, can't help you there. Uh, this, is, this is very, very cool, and uh, hopefully I'm invited to the party, uh, hanging out in the back afterwards. Yep. A friend of mine that was uh, sitting in his barn, his uh, nephew bought it brand new in Las Vegas, and he bought it in 1980, uh, brought it back to Ohio, and uh, he drove it a while, then it was sitting. Uh, it's all original body panels. The only thing I had to do was uh, have it repainted. About in 2004, I had it resprayed. Uh, the vinyl top is original. We just redyed that. A lot of the interior is original. A couple of dash pads been replaced and the seat's been recovered in the front. And this is pretty rare, right? Yes, it's uh, 1974. It's one of 761 they made with the 360. That was the uh, biggest option available on the motor. Isn't it amazing how some of the rarest cars, you just find them sitting in a barn somewhere? Yeah, it's a I, you know, story, I, right? It, it's one of those things, I went and seen it, and uh, the guy told me about it, and I opened the door, and it had lounge chairs sitting on it, covered in dust, a bunch of mouse poop on it, and uh, I, it was like, ah, oh, I see this on TV all the time, but I didn't think it would happen, you know? And did you know how rare it was, or did it just No, just I just knew it was a here. Plymouth Cuda, and I liked it. What is, uh, uh, first of all, the interior is awesome. It Thank looks, you. It looks great in Thank there. you. What is, uh, what's your favorite part of it? What really jumped out to you when you saw it? Uh, uh, I, I guess just because it was a, a Cuda, a Plymouth Cuda. I, and I'm a Mopar guy, so I wanted a Mopar, so. Did you, did you have a, a Cuda when you were younger? No, I had a Duster, but I almost bought one when I was younger, but my dad talked me out of it. Something was wrong with it, so. <laughs> well, now you got it. So right, it's the redemption exactly. story, right? I love the grill too with the uh, the red accent on the inside. Yeah, of the grill. thank you. I redid that grill. Uh, well, when I first got it, I redid it, and just last summer I redid it again just to spark it up a little bit. And how much uh, how much work did you have to put into that? Uh, a day. You know, just take everything off. Old cars come apart easy. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's <laughs> right. Not too bad. Right. Uh, this thing looks like it moves pretty good too. What can you get it up to out there? Uh, it goes. Uh, I've been. It, it goes quick. I actually the 360, the original motor is at home in the garage. I have a 440 in it now. Oh, okay. When did you switch the motors? Uh, actually, when I bought it, the gentleman had the 440 in it, but about five years ago, a friend of mine, we rebuilt it, so. And with the reason, just, just wanted the, the other motor in there? The bigger uh, I guess, yeah, he just wanted, you know, yeah. 440's fun, how yeah. can you say no? <laughs> What's the, so you, so you only go by the speed limit of this thing, right? Absolutely, never I never, I don't know if it goes over 55 or not. Oh yeah, I bet, I can tell. <laughs> I can see the truth all over your face on that. You're, you're lucky, I, I just cleaned it this morning, took the rubber off the back fender, so. <laughs> And I also love the, uh, the striping down the side, the accents is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, that's, that's original, you know, they said they've been replaced, but that's how the car would have come, yeah. So this is pretty much stock right off the showroom floor. Yeah, the only thing that's not really stock on it is the motor. That's something else. So, like I said, it's all stock uh, panels and everything on it. Was it this the original color as well? Yes, that's the original color. It's uh, deep Sherwood green metallic. Did you have a hard time finding that again, or was it pretty... No, you can get the yeah, it's no problem. Just go to uh, any body shop and spray it. You don't see a lot of the tops last that long either. No, it, it was it was taken care of. The definitely car was taken care of. Well, especially you don't see them last that long if they've been stowed away in a barn or something, if right. there's water damage or something like that. But it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Right. Yes, I I, I love it. Wouldn't so what trade is it. what's your plans? Is keep it forever? Are you gonna sell it someday? What is your idea with My this? My plans to keep it forever, but everything's for sale. Yeah. You know? It'd have to be a stupid number. Well, I say, don't look at me. I don't have money like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one of these other guys around here. But it's it's absolutely great, man. We appreciate you showing it to us, and thanks for bringing it out today. Thank you. I'm glad, glad to talk to you. Next up with the Buckeye guys. It's a complete motor change, power rack and pinion, uh, serpentine belt system, new AC system. The Buckeye guys updated Corvette next. Welcome to this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye guys. Today we're gonna to talk about time and material billing. What we do here is fully customized. We're doing an engine swap here in a Corvette. We can show you what we've done. It's a complete motor change, power rack and pinion, uh, serpentine belt system, new AC system converted to the new uh, type of uh, Freon they have out today. 
Don, do you want to add any insight into what we did to this vet here and how the time and material worked on this? Because it's basically impossible to even quote this, what this would cost. Do you want to explain that? Exactly, Nate. You know, it, it starts out as just a basic uh, engine swap and, you know, goes from there. Um, like you said, into the power steering rack and the full serpentine system. Um, so if, I, if we were just trying to quote an engine swap, it wouldn't be too terrible. But once you start compounding and then there's also the additional issues that are with the car that need addressed, um, you know, everything starts compounding and it gets very um, time consuming rather quickly. And uh, most of those problems can't be seen just by bringing the car in and taking a look. Now we've at done it. additional wiring here on this engine swap too, because we're putting a new aluminum radiator in from Be Cool. Absolutely. Um, with all that said and done, we've rewired this car here to take the electric fans, um, single wire alternator, the uh, single wire uh, AC pump, along with um, the MSD ignition correct, system. Correct. All wired in here. It looks very professionally done. Dave did a fantastic job on this. Um, so on a project like this, how can we start this with the customer? Do we, you know, what's the best way? Work from budget and go up to a certain point, or what do you think there, Don, and how we usually handle this? A lot of the ways that I like to address customers is to realistically look at the, what the parts are gonna cost. From there, you can get a good, uh, a good guess at what, uh, you know, if their budget can handle it or not. Um, a lot of times it is working within a budget and not necessarily uh, a true estimate or quote. Now some crate motors like this one here, this crate motor could be $20,000. They don't understand it could be another $15,000 put in the car. Absolutely. And that's the problem you run into. Um, all the extras that had to go into this car to make this motor fit, it just, you keep on adding stuff, adding stuff. What's a good stopping point? Un unfortunately, my good stopping point is uh, when it's done, which is also what the customer wants. Unfortunately, that uh, can get quite time consuming and uh, can be pricey. Right, and the car is never done until it's done correctly, correct? Right. All right. The quality premium product is what we're looking for every time. Right, and that's what Buckeye's known for, is a premium product delivered to the customer. Absolutely. And uh, we like to give the customers great satisfaction when they drive their ride. Thanks for tuning in with this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye, guys. As you can see, we are a full custom shop. We go from big to small projects. We have immediate openings for full custom car restorations, custom car builds, or brand new body shell builds. Give us a call at 330-533-4757. Coming up. 80-some-year-old car, it's hard to find the, the original old stock parts. Looks like you found them. Next on Cruise In. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big-time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Welcome back to the 7th Annual Classic Car Show at Molly McGee's in Strongsville, Ohio. Barry, this is very cool. What do you got here? I have a 1931 Model A Ford. It's a Victoria model. Wait, now this is, uh, is the first one of these type of cars you had, or have you bought these throughout your life? Or? I've had several others. I've had a, a double A uh, thing, uh, truck. I've had a 26 Model T and a couple other Model A's like this, had a two door and a four door. So this is kind of your passion? Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. How, how, much, how much work did you have to put into this? Uh, quite a bit of work. The, the car has been redone. Some of it I did and some of it I had done. Uh, the body work I had done in the paint. When I bought the car, it was actually a uh, maroon but it's all done in original uh, colors, that this is the way the car would have looked in 1931. What was the hardest part to restore on this? Finding parts or work-wise? Probably the parts. Yeah. Some of the, some of the parts, finding original parts. 80-some-year-old car, it's hard to find the, the original old stock parts. I, looking at the engine, it's like it's like nothing you see at all. This thing is huge. It's huge. But it doesn't look like it's got a whole lot of power attached to it. No, it has 221 cubic inches and it's 24 horsepower. That's really cool. I said it looks like a big sewing machine or something there. Yes, it does. That's, this is kind of that, uh, it takes you back to a different era though, when you, when you see it riding out on the road, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Get a lot of attention with it. 
And do you do anything special with it, take it to parades or anything like that? Yes, I do some parades and occasionally some weddings. My favorite thing to do with the automobile is to take it to nursing homes where there are a lot of older people and they really seem to appreciate the car. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, because I'm sure they don't get to see a lot of these anymore. That's no, sure. no, they really enjoy that. I enjoy doing that. So when, when you switched the colors, like, was it just to get it back to original? Was this, a, was this a color scheme you had in mind already? Or No, everything I've done on the car is back to what they call a uh, typical blue ribbon thing. In other words, it's all stock. And, and the interior as well, everything? Everything is, everything is the way the car would have looked. How comfortable is this to ride in? It's not too uncomfortable. It's a little short for your legs. There's not much leg room in it. People back then must have been a lot shorter. You would have been a giant back then. I would have been a giant yeah, back then. You're, now you're riding around it. And then, then speed-wise, what can you get this up to comfortably? Uh, comfortably about 40 to 45 miles an hour is comfortable. Uh, speed on it, it will go around 60, but way too fast in my opinion. Is it, is it a lot of, is fun to drive as it is to look at? Yes, it's yeah. a lot of fun to drive. Yeah. I mean, besides the tight turns, you gotta hit a tight right hand turn or something like right. that, right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, what is your favorite piece to this car? My favorite piece? Yeah. Um, probably the bustle back on the end with the spare tire and that. Yeah, it's very cool. I love the horn, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it loud? Do you scare people, pull behind them and scare them with that thing, or what? You can. It's a regular Ooga horn. That's yeah. what it does. You have to, I know you have to blow it for us now at some point. You know that, Okay, right? I will. All right. I, and the, uh, the, I also especially love the, uh, the green rims as well. So that, that's how the color scheme was back then, huh? The, Absolutely. Yes. You wouldn't think in that day and age, the what is it a maroon and, and green? Is that what it is? It would have been a, uh, a darker maroon, and then the wheels would have been a, a beige straw color, as they call it. Very nice. Very nice. Now, do you ever dress up in old timey clothes and then go ride around to make people think that they no. actually slip back in time? No. 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 You got to do that one time just for me. Okay. See what people's faces <laughs> I will. are when they ride around. <laughs> Uh, this is very cool. Thank you so much for bringing out. Oh, thank uh, you very much for stopping. You're piling up it. awards too, so keep up the good work, right? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. What a great day from Molly McGee's in Strongsville out here at their seventh annual car show. I had a blast hanging out with Luis here. And Luis, this is your ride, right? This is. This is a 1970 Plymouth Duster. Has a 383 cubic inch engine. And you just got this? I did, about a month ago. Pretty lady with a muscle car, guys, what a catch. I'm already married to Greg Schumacher. Oh, well, it's too late, but I'm Will Burge, saying so long from Cruise In, and we'll see you next time. Cool.